us. Yes. Good to see you guys. Terry, it's always good to see you. Garth, nice Thanks. to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, Garth, maybe don't want to talk too much about today's match. Uh, <laughs> a tough one for your boys. Uh, that's a pretty good U of A squad that they come up against, though, isn't it? Well, you got to give them credit. I mean, they, they blocked like crazy, and uh, George was all over the place. I think he read every set that we had, and not only did he get to the right places, but he used his hands and put the ball to the ground pretty quickly. So uh, very frustrating uh, night for our hitters because they just couldn't find a way to get past them. Well, why don't we talk about some happier times then, Terry? You were talking in the in the <laughs> the pregame there about the story with Garth when you were were watching him. Yeah. Team Canada used to play here in Edmonton, <clears throat> train in Edmonton. Is that where you kind of first saw Garth and Team Canada play? Yeah, actually, I would have been in grade ten in 1975, and Team Canada had had some preparation matches with both <coughs> Cuba and Japan here in Edmonton prior to the '76 Olympics. So. Um, my high school team, we were sitting up on the bleachers up there watching, and that was the first time I had a chance to see Garth play. I'd heard about all about him as a kid because his name was pretty pretty much out there in volleyball in Canada. And so um, that year, watching <coughs> him play, and then a couple summers later, getting to scrimmage against him in Toronto uh, with our junior national team, and he was on a Fichu team. And then finally, the opportunity to play in 78 together for the first time was amazing. And that kind of sparked a, a long-time friendship between the two of you, hasn't it? And obviously, then you went head-to-head -head coaching for so many years. And just what's that been like, Garth, just to kind of go, I know, be teammates well, with Terry and then now go head-to-head -head with him? Yeah, for yeah time. Let's, let's not forget what uh, Terry Danilek did, as, not only as a volleyball <laughs> player, but as a coach. I mean, this guy... He could play any position on the court. He was one of the fa my favorite guys to play with on the national team because he was he'd fill in anywhere and he never questioned anything that that any coach uh, had out there. He just went out there and played his role and and he played it very very well. And uh, you know not only was he one of the greatest Golden Bears of all time, but he's one of the best players this country's seen. So <laughs> it's uh, it was a pleasure to to play with him. Um, it was a pleasure to coach against him too. I mean, he look what he did with this program during his coaching coaching years at, at Alberta. He's just uh, he's one of a handful of the phenomenal coaches this country's ever had, and and uh, so it's a a credit to everything that he's done for the sport of volleyball. I know Terry, you said that when you first your first match for the national team. It was Garth who came over and kind of said, I got your back. He said totally. it was your big brother mm -hmm. moment. Garth, did you see a, a wide-eyed kid who just needed someone to come settle him down? Is that why he went over? Well, you know, I, I just saw a guy that just had a passion for the game, and uh, and he was going to find a way to do it on, on his own too. But if I could help him out, for sure, I'd love to, you know, help him take the first couple steps. But uh, there's no question that he, that he had the, the talent and, and the desire and, and the willingness to learn and uh, and the willingness to, to make everybody – around him a better player so uh you know he did that with his players here at the university of alberta and i'm sure they've appreciated everything he did and and probably love him for it and uh and uh i think he's he deserves the credit mccarthy you got to play 76 montreal but then terry the both of you got to play together in 84 in los angeles what was that experience like for you at the olympic games to represent canada you know, it was it was an amazing experience. It was great to be able to do it with someone like Garth who had the experience. And, and I wish I had a chance to do it a second time because I think there was a lot of lessons learned for us as a team in that Olympic Games. It was a little bit disappointing mm -hmm. not coming away with a medal because I think we were good enough to have done that. Uh, you know, and funny, it's one of my, one of my funniest memories of the Olympics and, and, and fondest memories is not really the tournament in the end, but Garth had this thing that he had to be the last guy to go into the stadium and the closing ceremonies. And so he talked me into hanging out with him at the back of the line and we waited till everybody got into the stadium. And, and then at the end, we were walking side by side and then I, I started to turn around and he'd pause so that he would actually be the last guy to go in. <laughs> but going in last gave us front row seats to, to oh, the Oh, I was going to say, why was yeah. it so important? You wanted to see everything. Well, yeah, and then people would recognize us too for walking in there. But uh, that was part of the experience of done it, having done it before in 76. You, you knew what to look for. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> I know we'll talk a little bit about more of the university stuff in a little bit, but I, I'm curious to get both of your guys' opinion on volleyball in this country right now. Obviously, <laughs> qualifying for Tokyo, second straight Olympics for the men's program. It seems to be 
taking strides forward <clears throat> once again after a bit of a lull? Is that kind of where you see things once again? Obviously, your teammate Glenn Hogue from 84 <laughs> is, is the head coach once again, so he's got sure the is. program going in the right direction. Yeah, the, and the first thing, congratulations to everybody involved in the program, uh, Glenn and his assistant coaches and, uh, and all the players too for just putting on a, a great exhibition of volleyball and, and a very high caliber level of volleyball. I mean, Canada volleyball is certainly uh, doing very, very good in, in our men's program, and, and Glenn's been a, a huge part of that. We all know that. It was a pleasure being a, a teammate of his in, in 84 along with, with Terry. So, uh, you know, uh, I think their best is yet to come, and we're really looking forward to the, to the tournament in, in Tokyo and, uh, and seeing uh, those guys come away with that medal that we'd like to see. Yeah, I totally agree with everything Garth said, and the fact that they've been able to go back-to-back -back Olympics is the first time ever for, for volleyball uh, in Canada, and I think it's, it's so exciting to see. And I hope uh, the steps that I think our country took after the last Olympics, the popularity, the, the job that the Brazilians did of actually talking about uh, uh, about volleyball and showing all the games that they did. I think Japan will do a similar thing because volleyball is pretty popular there, and our sport really gained a lot of... Uh, significance I think after the last Olympics and obviously the men's results they were so close to being there. We see that photo that we show in the pregame as well. Uh, <laughs> takes back some yeah. memories obviously. Yeah this is Garth with his out. mustache right here. I was <laughs> Just watching? I, I, yeah this is actually me with yeah. the hair on the top of my head which is <laughs> there you go. Let's blow that up. <laughs> for so long. <laughs> yeah. That ball looks like it got through so you must have done okay there. Oh, I went yeah. off the top. I'm not <laughs> I, I can safely say in my life I might have hit two balls that actually went clean to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he knew his limits and he <laughs> stayed within them, and uh, that's why he was as consistent as he was. And you're in good coverage position there then, so <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Um, maybe just talk a little bit about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I might have heard that. Terry, were you still playing? university when when gar started coaching yeah totally actually our first banner in 1981 banner that's up there somewhere the very first one up there we beat manitoba in the final 3-2 in victoria uh okay. garth i think that was your second year already as head coach maybe third maybe right? third i think yeah yeah third year yeah uh -huh. yeah. yeah so yeah all three of the years that i played at right. U of A, garth was the coach at manitoba so we had played together and then he had also been playing in a, in a really cool pro league in the States at the same time that he was coaching in the summers. Well, I can let Garth talk about that if he wants. But uh, and then <coughs> it was really awesome to get a chance to play with him again later. I mean, he was a, it was a later addition to our 84 team. He was a guy that we knew we needed to have with us at that time. And um, he was just super great to have around. And we all learned and benefited so much from him coming back and joining us then. Garth, what kind of things have you, I guess, took from the time that you played into <coughs> your coaching? Obviously, it's a transition that most players tend to make you don't just obviously jump into the coaching but was it easier to maybe coach having played experience particularly at a, at a high level like the Olympics well you know for myself and I don't know how Terry feels about this but it, it was just coaching was an extension of my playing career and I was just I was a very very competitive person and uh, and to have that that opportunity to do that as a coach I you know I, it was it was great for me and a great experience it, it was difficult at first I mean I there I can't remember how many times I just wanted to sub myself onto the court for a player <laughs> to and say hey come on guys this is the way you're supposed to do it and uh, uh, but eventually you know and I was very animated and very emotional and Eventually, I got to the point where, okay, now I, I think it's time to yell at these guys. And uh, inside, I'm laughing and, I'm, you know, getting mad at them and trying to light a fire <laughs> under them and, and stuff. So it's, uh, the, the whole coaching thing has evolved a ton over the, over the years. Yeah, I, I just want to add, it's kind of funny because when I started, and well, Garth had been coaching for 100 years by then, <laughs> <laughs> but I had a really similar experience, except we weren't allowed to stand up then. We weren't even allowed to say stuff, oh, really, really? No. With, which was no. the most frustrating part about coaching. And then by the time I was able to stand up, I had gotten past that phase that Garth <laughs> went through. So <laughs> it was just like, okay, too late. So obviously one of the biggest changes, I guess, from the time you guys were playing and, and started coaching uh, was the side-out game. Uh, obviously now every point kind of goes. What else have you seen kind of evolve in the sport from when you guys <coughs> first got involved to, to where it is now? Well, just the athleticism of the players. I mean, it's uh, from – and I'm going way back to, you know, the 75, 76 when I first started playing. I mean, we, we had some – 
very good volleyball players in, in those days playing for Canada. But, you know, then we get to the up to the 84 team, and, and every one of those guys could have been successful in virtually any sport they wanted to play. They were just bigger and, and stronger and very, very athletic guys. And uh, and it's just kept going. I mean, now they're, you guys are touching over 12 feet, and uh, and it's it's really fun to have been a part of this, how the game has progressed over these last 43 years or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just my no, coaching. Uh, then, yeah, then there was yeah, the other, there was too, other yeah. 25 years of playing. I don't, and, yeah, <laughs> we don't have enough fingers and toes between the no. two of us. <laughs> Has it changed the way you coach too, just that athleticism? Oh, definitely. I mean, and that's been that's been the fun part about it is is we've we've had as coaches we've had to get better all the time because there's more and more uh, more and more things going on and and the, the whole business of coaching for me has changed so much because in the early years I think it was such a new game and I, and I really felt that my experience I'd you know probably was was ahead of a lot of people in this country and then these guys like Danilek started coming along and and man what he's done with this program and then it just kept going and now there's just a, a ton of very good university coaches out there so the the challenge was just got greater and greater every year you guys had a lot of head-to-head -head battles <coughs> coaching are there any memories that stand out from a game between the two of you guys or <coughs> anything that kind of jumps out top of your head <coughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the one thing Garth probably hates about me is in that 81 championship, yeah. I used to have this habit of getting a stuffed block and then doing this little dance. <laughs> uh -huh, I broke uh -huh. that habit. I broke that habit, I thank God. But I know for sure uh, getting the stuffed block, doing this dance, I remember specifically at one point in the match, like he just like stood up and was saying something to the referee or to me. I don't remember. I was in such a zone. It didn't really matter. But I, I think probably, uh, you know, as far as all the games we've coached against each other, I don't, I don't really have a specific moment, but I always knew that if I wasn't prepared, I, we were going to be in trouble. And so I really felt like, you know, I had to, I had to, I had to focus and, and Garth was quite tactical in his, his coaching in his early days. And uh, I'm not saying that he isn't now, but the game has changed for both of us. And there's <coughs> younger guys out there doing different things. And, and you know, uh, we really had to work hard to stay, I think, at the top of our game for a long time. And I was just an honor to be able to be at that level with Garth for many years and to, to learn from him and to watch the successes of his team and <coughs> try to incorporate that into what we're doing. Like many of the younger teams that are now successful are doing with what, what we maybe have established in the sport of volleyball. And they've taken it to a different level altogether but I don't have one memory my fondest memories I'm going to say it are still playing with Garth not coaching right. against Garth and I'll, right. I'll always cherish that. Garth you won nine national championships during your time with the U of M is there one that yeah. means more or is a little bit more memorable? Uh, you know it, it probably was you know a few of the years there was years that that we won that we were supposed to win Right. And uh, and I always sit there going, I'm sitting on the bench and probably wiping my brow and going, phew, I'm glad we we finished that <laughs> one off because right. we were, you know, 56 and one that year or 56 <laughs> and ever. But, uh, you know, the the memorable ones are probably the ones that uh, that we were, were ranked fourth or fifth or, or even second and came in and, uh, and played well. And uh, I won't mention any specific ones, but uh, uh, those are the ones that, were, that are, for me, were really exciting and really, uh, really stick in my mind. Terry, was there a special way to prep for a, a Garth Pischke team or...? Uh, you know, I, one of the one of the times I remember really Garth, the, the the type of coach he was, was uh, <coughs> before I won my first championship in '97 as a coach. We lost in the final to Garth's team in Calgary, um, and we had this big left-handed guy that was a pretty good volleyball player. But he, you know, if if he had to move a lot, he wasn't going to be successful on the outside. And all year we were really successful and no one had ever done it to us before and it was nothing that I could prepare for and we get to the final and they short serve this guy for every point in the match that they could and uh, Greg That's Proctor I hope really you're not listening <laughs> right now but uh, they petered him out and the tactics in that match were like it was something that he was you know that he d developed it was something that he got his guys to buy into and they beat us up that day and my lesson for the next year was okay um, 
if I'm going to see Garth again, there's no way anybody's short serving <laughs> us and beating us again. And so, you know, those are the, those are the things that I remember. And that that match in particular was mm. one where I was not prepared for that to happen. No one had done it. He knew that it was the best way to handle a pretty successful volleyball mm. player, and 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 they shut him down and shut us down to win the championship. I rem I remember that very very vividly because it was one of those years that we we probably weren't ranked, you know, the team right. to beat. And in fact. Terry had beaten us six or seven times that that year, so I just said, you know, we got to do do something different. And uh, and the the funny part of that was watching the replay of the game afterwards. And and I think it was halfway through the second set, you guys had had won the first set and and we're winning this the second one. And I just remember Vic Lindell coming on. The, he was announcing the game at the time. And he <laughs> goes, Pishke, what is wrong with you? Why do you keep serving that guy short? <laughs> they, they know what you're doing. And, and we just kept going. And eventually it started you could just feel it turning in the, in the game <laughs> totally. yeah he was a big heavy guy and they just wore him down after right. coming yeah. forward to try to get outside <laughs> the thing was he was a super good passer right yeah. get the pass but he couldn't score after because it was too hard for him to get back outside so yeah. it, it changed the, what we were doing and yeah i'll always i'll always remember that I was so frustrated but as a coach those were the things that made me better because the next year i was prepared for all of that and and more mm. and i learned my lesson going into that game because we had beaten manitoba and i thought okay mm. this could be a championship you know for yeah. us and it didn't work out that way so i think the one of the things i really love about coaching is the problem solving and that was a problem garth found a problem and and for me, I, I, I thank him for that because the championship that we won the next year is the one that I remember the most just because I sat there and just smiled to watch everything unravel. And to win for the first time for me, it was amazing. And I have to thank Garth for that because I think the next year I – maybe the best coaching I ever done as far as tactics uh, happened in that 97 season. And then it was all because of what had happened in that final in 96. Outstanding stuff. Garth, you guys are getting ready for nationals. Obviously really cool to host nationals in, in your final season. What kinds of, th what does that mean to you? And what kinds of things are you going to prepare your boys for, for that event? Well, you know, for me, it's, I'm just so, so happy that, uh, that you sport decided to, to give us the championship because it it means a lot for me um, going out and to be able it's the first time we've hosted so it's oh uh, really okay. yeah so to be able to do that in my final year we've got a you know for anyone that's that's listening out there we've tried to contact all of our alumni uh, especially my alumni over the 38 years it's and for uh, about 20,000 people <laughs> <right>. <laughs> and uh, we're expecting a pretty big crowd it's going to be so much so much fun walking into that room and and seeing everybody and uh, be able to get the stories flowing again and uh, nice. and uh, it's just going to be a good time and that's what it's all about for me this this year really it's uh, you know it's it's been a fun Fun career, but, uh, you know, we're going to go out with some fun. It's awesome. I could probably sit here and talk to you guys all night, but we just don't have the time for that. Terry, appreciate the time. Garth, first of all, congratulations on just an outstanding career. Best of luck going forward. Best of luck at Nationals. Yes. And, and thank you for your time and a safe trip home. All right. Thank there you, you go. very much. That Garth Pischke joining us. Terry Thanks. Daniluk as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> that was fun. That was. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good time.